name snapshots, file snapshots, this file backups, and at the same time, SQL native backups. We get them somehow. It doesn't matter how we get them. But it will be a third party method. So once we get those backups, we are going to put it inside our Azure storage. So we're going to go buy, go buy some uh, Azure subscription, put up a blog, and then so we're going to purchase as a storage from Azure subscription and then move all our backups to the cloud. So that's going to be the basic method on premise. But there's an issue. Primary one would be need to manage. Because we'll be using customized scripts to get our backups. It is going to be a hassle. So you can't do automation with that. You have to maintain your queries every day. You have to run it manually. So it's going to be a major burden. And the second uh, second one would be no centralized management. For SQL, you have to run one script. For file shares, you have to run one script. For all the VMs and all, VHDs, if you're using Hyper-V, another method. If you're using uh, VMware, it's going to be another method. If you're using physical servers, another method. So you can't control anything Central. So that's going to be a huge issue for this method. So the second option would be you can use a backup software. So this backup software can be uh, Windows, Microsoft Windows Native One, which is the VPN, or any other third party tool, VM, Commodore, likewise. So this method is possible. You get your on premise environment backups with your own third party or Microsoft VPN solution, get the entire thing, and then Purchase Azure storage, move everything to the cloud. So that would be the second option. But then again, if you look at the infrastructure side, you need to maintain another set of storage compromise. For example, if you want to keep your, if your organization needs five years of data inside your organization, for example, let's say you have a file server, you have a compliance already that your data should be kept inside your backups. For five years, there are compliance organizations, banks especially, they need to keep their data for six to twelve years. So in this case, you need to have huge amount of storage inside your organization. For example, if you are going to have six years, let's say 50 10 to 15 terabytes, you need to keep it on premise and you need to purchase it in the cloud as well. So this is not going to help you in the long run. So that's where Azure Backup comes in. So what happens in Azure Backup, we are focusing on three main components. First one would be, especially since we are talking about IAS, we're talking about physical servers, the traditional method. Lots of our customers are still using VM, sorry, physical servers. Going into virtualization, there are two platforms. It's currently supported. One would be Hyper-V, and the other option would be VMware. So when it comes to enterprise servers, we have found out, okay, there's lots of VMware customers. So we need to identify, okay, this is the customer's requirement, this is their setup, so we need to cater a backup solution, disaster recovery solution. So we are catering all of three platforms. So in a nutshell, if you have a physical environment, we have a Hyper-V environment, and if you have a VMware environment, we do support backups in Azure. So how are we going to do that? For example, we have this underlying platform of operating system uh, virtualization or system layer. And on top of that, we have SQL, Exchange, SharePoint, File Server, or any other third party workflow. Even Linux we can take. So what are we going to do? It's simple, we have our infrastructure, we have our data. What we're going to do now is install and deploy something called Azure Backup. So in Azure Backup, it's simply a VPM server, the latest version of VPM server of Kermans, but it goes as Azure Backup Server. So with that, it's going to take the entire snapshot of this environment, put it inside its own backup, then we can move it to the cloud. Simple as that. In a nutshell, we only have, infrastructure-wise, we only have one server. But the advantage would be you don't need to have, you don't need to keep all your data 
to simplify the of data on device. So what you're going to do is you're going to capture today's data, keep it in my server, and then you're going to upload it to Azure. Initial stage, that's it. So after that mega upload, if somebody says you have VM, uh, 100 GB, let's say, or 50 GB VM, what you're going to do is, Azure, you're going to take a backup. You're going to take a backup of your VM, entire VM. You're going to store it. How we store it is by like this. So you have your on-premise server. You take a backup and we keep that backup in a compressed mode. So we are not going to upload your 50 GB of virtual machine into Azure. You're going to compress it. You can put it in 30, 25, 30, 40 GB. You can compress it. So you're going to compress your data and then you're going to move it to the cloud. Which is the Azure backup service. So once we send that data, you can tell, okay, I need my data on premise for this much of time. I need to keep my data on cloud for this much, this much of time. For example, I can tell, okay, I don't need to keep all my data, for five years of my data, I don't need to keep it on premise because that's going to cost me this story. What I can do is, I'm going to keep just six months of data on premise. The rest, I'm simply going to upload to cloud. That's how Azure Backup works. When it comes to Azure Backup, you can keep it up to 100 years. So you don't have any compliance issues over there. You're only paying for storage and other transaction data, that's it. You don't need to pay for on-premise servers, storage, especially SAN. If you're having a SAN on-premise that keeps Azure data, so backup data, it's going to cost you millions. But if Azure Backup, you don't need to do that. You're keeping a small amount of time duration of snapshots on premise, the rest, the cloud. A simple environment, six months of data on premise, 10 years of data, the cloud. What you can do is when you want to retain them, you call the actual backup service, and you can see, okay, up to 10 years of data, you can see one by one. You're going to grab it, you're going to simply grab it, okay, five years back data. I can select, download it, and you have all your data. Simple as that. So you're going to pay only for the resource cons consumed by Azure. Simple as that. That's how your optimized environment backup will work. Now there's another scenario. You can backup Azure servers or Azure file services to your environment, uh, to your Azure as well. So on premise. Azure Backup, yes, possible. If you have your Azure Virtual, Azure Virtual Machines already running in cloud, what about backup of that? Can you install Commodore or something like that? Yes, you can do that, but it's going to cost you a lot. Storage-wise, yes, again, it's going to cost you a lot. But with this Azure Backup, we have services built in the underlying layers. So you don't need to worry about installing again because we have already installed that public layers and everything is already there. Simple. So file shares. Yes, you will support file and share backup as well. Now, uh, let me just quickly give you an introduction of backup uh, to the portal. Now, when it comes to backup or any disaster recovery or backup scenario, the first thing that you need to create is to create a board. So what we call a vault is, it's like a storage and container, a huge container. It's like this room. Inside this room, we're going to keep all our backup services, virtual machine services, likewise. So the first thing will be, you will be creating the vault. So I'll just keep creating vault because it's going to take some time. Just remember, first thing, you need to create a vault. So once you create a backup vault, or a cover service vault, this is how it's going to look like without this application items one. <coughs> so we need to back up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can back up an actual virtual machine already the cloud. You go to recovery services wall, you call it, and then you simply click backup. 
So once you take backup, you can specify a backup goal. Okay, what I'm going to backup? What is my workload? You can have you have two options. One would be Azure services. The second option would be on-premise services. So let, let me just go through Azure VM. If I go through Azure, I have another two options. Okay, now my data is in one platform, Azure, not on-premise. So inside Azure, what am I going to do? We have another two options. Virtual machines, and then Azure file share. The Azure file share, if you go to cloud storage, you can create file shares. So if you go to cloud storage and create a file share, that's what we are going to back up. So right now, this demo would be backing up a virtual machine. So I click virtual machine, then go to backup. Right now, I have selected my source environment. What I'm going to do is specify is, okay, what is the retention or backup frequency? How long I'm going to take my backups of my Azure virtual machine? So you can create a new policy. We will give it a name demo two. And the backup frequency you can give it daily or weekly. You can daily, you can specify a time and a time zone. So if you are in Sri Lanka, your workload is in Sri Lanka, you give Sri Lanka time zone. If your work workload is in some different other country, if you're working for a huge company, something like that, you select US time. And after that, you can see retention. So retention means how long your data is going to be kept inside Azure storage. So if you look over here, we are going to keep a daily backup every morning at 11.30 for 180 days. So I'm going to backup virtual machine every morning at 11.30. And that VM will be kept for 100 days. The backup will be there for 100 days. So 180 days. So we can increase that. No issues. Just like that, weekly backup, monthly backup, and at the same time, we can have daily backups as well. So see, go to daily backup. January 1st, Sunday at 11.30, I'm going to take a backup and I'm going to keep it on Azure for 10 years. You can keep it 10 years, yearly backup inside our storage. So you don't need to keep it on premise. Your Azure workload already in the cloud, we're going to save it in the cloud. You don't need to get it on premise. We have that thing really built in. And then once you have selected it, just simply click OK. So the reason I'm going to select the only created one, it's easy. Right. Now I'm going to select my virtual machine. Items to backup. So I have selected virtual machines, so I can see my already running virtual machines. So I'm going to select my virtual machine and then click OK. That's it. Enable backup. Simple as that. So right quickly, how long does it take to create a backup of the Azure 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 machine? Couple of minutes, right? That's how easy and fast we can do it. And this backup is going to be kept for 10 years. No compliance issues. You can keep it, no worries at all. So deployment in progress, you can speak over here. We we'll monitor the status. So everything's over here. Okay, we cancel it. Right. So that's how you can create a backup of your virtual machine. But let's say you're working on an application or a website or a file share. So if you're working on the workloads over there on the cloud, you might be in, uh, you might have a requirement of keeping a file file share on Azure. So you'll be using something like this. We have a storage account where you're going to grab your data and store your data. 
inside files, we have a file share. So this is the file share that you might be using for your website development, other web blogs, a development, likewise, or your file share, something like that. So you're going to grab all your data from here, and you're going to put it in your website, something like that. Simple. So if you're using your data on, on the cloud, how can you guarantee your file level data? If someone goes to the cloud, open up the resource manager, and then delete the file, delete all your files. You don't have any backups of your data, right? You can't collect your data back. Because if you have geolocation redundancy or deleted items will get replicated, you know you won't be able to get your data back. But if you have a file share, if you have tens of thousands of data over there, files over there, you can use this method. What you're going to do is again go to the recovery wall. Go to backup and then yes, my data is in Azure and my item type will be file share. And I'm going to back it up, uh, back up all my file shares over here. Just repeat the, the file share. Okay. It's going to take a bit of time, so let me just quickly run you through this setup. So, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, these are my files which I need to backup. So, if you have 100 GB, 500 GB of data, okay, so here, go to it, okay, and then again, backup frequency. Retention policy, we set it up over here. 10 years of data we need to keep, we set it up over here. Then it click. Okay. Then it goes backup. That's it. In a couple of minutes, you can enable your backup. Simple as that. Now, let's say we have a backup of virtual machine inside our cloud environment. Now suddenly, someone just documented something to that virtual machine and he just pushed up. The entire virtual machine is now unusable. So my file share is completely gone. What can I do? How can I get everything back? Now is we have enabled a backup of our virtual virtual machine. We go to cloud. Again, we cover service vault. We drop down and we select Backup items. We select that and we can see we have enabled two Azure virtual machines to be backed up. And file shares, we have two. I'm going to recover virtual machine, so I click on my virtual machine. Then I can see my existing virtual machine, which I kept for backup sometime back yesterday, and the new virtual machine that I just started initial backup to have the right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here, and I can see my Azure Virtual Machine backup status. If you have a quick look over here, I can see the time that it has been backed up. First one was at around 11.40 a.m., second time 3.42 a.m. Right now, let's say my virtual machine is totally screwed up, but I'm pretty much sure that at this time, my virtual machine data was perfectly good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to restore it to that point. Select that. And then, okay. So then fine, everything everything's fine. And going to do is restore VM. Select your virtual machine, oh, sorry, uh, snapshot hand, and then click on the restore virtual machine. Again, we have to select that. This one. Okay. And it gives me an option. What options do I have? I can recreate the virtual machine in other storage. Or else I can recreate the disk, restore the disk. 
So when it comes to a virtual machine, everything's saved into a disk. So we can replace the disk or replace the entire virtual machine itself. We have both options. Okay, let's get this one. Give it a name, give it a resource group and everything. Click OK, that's it. Your machine will get uh, restored in a couple of minutes based on your virtual machine size and probably less than 10 15 minutes. If you take the backup on premise, how long will it take? It's going to take you quite a bit of time, right? If you need to find the backup, this is the backup tool, it fits in here. Trust me, if it's in here, it's going to take you hours to recover the backup from a table. If it's in a disk, okay, but depends on the IOS of your disk type. SAN, quite okay, but in a table, trust me, it's going to take hours. So within a couple of minutes, you can recover or restore the backup. That's it. Now we talked about, uh, let's say, okay. I'm going to do some changes to my virtual machine. Can I do it manually? Can I back up my virtual machine manually? Yes. Go to your VM, click back up now. Your title, click OK. Right. It's going to start back up of your VM instantly. Simple as that. Now we talked about backing up of your data in fashion. What about my on-premise environment? We talked about on-premise environment, right? Okay, let's see how we can do that. Okay. We go to our recovery services wall. That's where we do all of our recovery services. We go to backup infrastructure. And then we click on. Let me create a new one for you. I click on getting started. I click on premise. After that, I'm going to select what type of data, what type of items I'm going to back up. When it comes to my on premise environment, Hyper V, virtual machine, uh, VMware, and physical machines, these are the types that I can say files and folders. So, uh, file and services for PFS share. Hyper V virtual machines, VMware virtual machines. Yes, yeah, we can back up your SQL server as well. Exchange server, SharePoint, Exchange, System State, and the Amazon Recovery. So these types we can back up from our compromise environment. So I'm going to select file server and VMware, prepare infrastructure. So right now, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me okay, you need to install a backup server inside your environment. This is the server that we need to install. <coughs> In our on-premise environment, we create our backup, we install our backup server, backup server from here. It shows the link to download, and then we create the environment. Once we create your environment, it's going to look like something like this. Right. This is going to be your Azure backup server console. First thing, in services, you click, and then you add your environment. Windows servers or VMware servers. You click next, install agents, and then automatically it will identify your domain environment, it will identify your machines. You click next, name, then select a particular server. So once you have created your backup servers like this, right now I'm going to protect virtual uh, VMware server. At the same time, I'm going to uh, back up Windows Server, which is running Microsoft Exchange, which has a database. So if I go to protection, what I can see is I can see my Exchange database protection method and virtual machine VMware production environment. This is actually a VMware server. So what happens is I show backup server. So you talk to your VMware environment, then grab all of your virtual machines, and then it's going to have that particular VM inside your Azure Backup Server. 
simple. And again, like your Azure services, you can retain your data up to 10 years, couple of years, based on your environment. Example, let me say, let me show you that. This is my backup services. I'm going to click my exchange environment. Okay. Exchange databases will be backed up. Right. I want short term protection using this. Now, the first option says that when I do the backup, the initial snapshot will be compromised. At the same time, I need online protection as well. So you have an off site, oh, sorry, on site compromised backup protection. At the same time, cloud based storage options. Click next. Next up. Ask for my email a little bit, and you can say retention win. How much of days I need to keep my data on the device? If I select 100, let's give 10. 11 days, it's going to keep my data on the device. After 11 days, it's going to delete the first day, initial backup state. So after 11 days, it keeps my data on the device. But if I click next, you can see that. Every day, we have to perform a backup. And that backup, we are going to keep for 100 days, 10 years. So, on premise, I'm going to keep for 100 days because I don't have states. But cloud, I'm going to keep for 10 years. Simple. So, you just go next and then you create the backup, initiate the backup, and your data will start replicating the cloud. That's it. So, that's that's easy when it comes to a backup environment. You don't need to worry about storage, uh, whether it's VMware or hypervisor you're using, or platform you're using, because we have that capability with it. Uh, let me just go to the next slide. Just <coughs> that. Site recovery. So we talked about backups. We have our servers. What if something goes wrong with my data? We back up, we restore, that's it. Now just imagine, you're having two servers on premise. Your SQL servers, or any other application server running on premise. And suddenly, something happens to your data center. Something happens to your physical server, physical disk, anything. That's it, you don't have your backups, you don't have any data, anything. How fast can I get back my data running? If, I, if my entire site goes down, even if I have a backup, do I have a server? I don't have a server. I need to purchase a server or rent a server, run my uh, workloads. I need to install my domain controller, get my SQL running. It's going to be a mess in your environment. But if you have Azure Site Recovery, what you're doing is, you're going to take a snapshot of your environment, whether it's a storage, hypervisor, operating system layer, or the application layer. You're going to grab a snapshot of that data. And then you're going to migrate everything to the cloud. So at a given time, for example, right now, all of my data will be synchronized from here to here. So at a given time, my data is actually the same in both sides. So if this goes down right now, I have another copy of my entire system in cloud. So what I can do is go to my Azure setup. If it's an operating system, I have synchronized my VHD. We don't need to do that. We don't need to get the VHD and then copy paste into a storage where we don't need to do that. What you're going to do is we're going to use Azure Site Recovery Services. Okay, this is my source server. This is my destination site, which is Azure. You do the replication. That's it. So when this goes down, 
So we have a VHD in cloud. We know that VHD in cloud, we create a virtual, virtual machine. We don't need to create resource groups, this, anything. Actually, it's going to do that for me. So within a couple of minutes, actually, you can start up your entire compromised environment in Azure. So remember, storage, yes, hypervisor error, yes, VMware, it's fine. Physical machines, no worries. Hyper-V, totally fine. Operating systems, again, yes, and applications like SQL, all this on everything, we can take into Azure Site Server, Site Recovery tools. So this is basically how it's going to happen for VMware. So we take a snapshot for VMware, okay. We can take a snapshot, keep it in our Azure store, compromised environment, storage, and then smooth it out. So the biggest advantage would be, let's say you have a virtual uh, VHD of 100 GB. So initially I need to move all of my 100 GB data into cloud. You need to do that, no option. So we're going to move all my data initially once to full data, full uh, to the cloud. So after that, what's going to happen is it's going to take <coughs> incremental states of my environment. So bandwidth wise, you don't need to worry about bandwidth of uh, getting all your data again and again and again. Because one full scene, initially, that's it. After that, all incremental backup, uh, sorry, incremental snapshots. So once we do that, we have a brand new site in the cloud. In case we have a time mission, I'll just show you the tensor of it. My is our all. So, yeah, I have the site recovery. Right now, what I'm doing is actually this is my infrastructure service. So, it's going to show me right now my infrastructure server compromised, doesn't have network connected storage account. So there's an issue. You can see it from my cloud itself. If everything's okay, what it's going to do is it's going to get my virtual machine DHP, move it to the cloud. So what I'm backing up is an SQL machine, SQL server. So 96% synchronized to the new backup. It's going to give me errors as well. Right now it's going to say, okay, network connective issues are there. So monitoring part, you can do it in the cloud itself. You need to go to your network settlement and okay, what is this? You need to go to your event logs of that particular machine because we can see it right from here. So monitoring and management wise, it's quite easy for you. Single pen source. Right on the cloud, which on the cloud, holding on the cloud. So once your virtual machine has been desiccated, what you can do is uh, you can simply initiate a failover. So when I click the failover over here, what's gonna happen is it's going to create a new virtual machine of this exact same specs. So I can see my SQL server details. So from here, once your data has been uploaded completely, it's going to show you my computer properties, compromise and my succession. Network properties, network interfaces, but what I have on the device and what I, what I will be getting in the cloud. I can see everything over here. So, instantly, if my on premise environment goes down, I go over here, overview, and then click payload. Click that. Just give me one second. Uh, let me check if I have another copy. Okay. Sorry for that, I don't have any set up. So what's going to happen is, you select failover and your virtual machine, SQL server virtual machine will be automatically created in Azure. So, you don't need to do anything about it. Simple as that, just one click, click next, 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 that's it. 
So when it comes to recovery, that would be quite fast. Because when you provision things to the cloud, Azure will do the backend part by itself. You don't need to worry about your network, subnets, and everything. So it's going to get replicated in the cloud itself. So if you have Azure subscriptions, you can fight out. If you have running applications, Linux applications, or any other SQL, stuff like that, try it out. Because in your organizations, if you're not working on backup and site recovery, if your client or partner or anyone needs that, you can try it out. Because you can try all the features. It doesn't matter if your environment is virtual machine or physical machine. These support everything. And there's a lot more when it comes to site recovery. Find something adding new features. Example for uh, Linux applications and all, we are adding new features, new capabilities in the future. So we will see a uh, couple of cool scenarios comes to Linux in the coming months. So Azure, you don't worry about what platform it is, what technology you are using. We have a solution for that. That's how we make it to roll out our environment in cloud. And thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, uh, thanks. Yeah, out of time, just talk to me, I'll be right outside. Uh, just to show you, we have our sponsors. Thank you for all the sponsors, please supporting our show, Global Azure Bootcamp. If you have any questions, please do contact me. And I would really appreciate if you can just read my email, go to that uh, part of the uh, link, you can see the uh, rating point, you can grab the Snapshot and then you can read it as you please. If you have something, just talk to me. I'll be right outside. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.